what we found was that people were relatively good at figuring out in their workplace who felt cooperatively towards them, but they actually so poor at figuring out whether people felt competitively towards them, they essentially zero accuracy. And we speculate that in the workplace, when you feel cooperatively towards somebody, you let it show. You want people to know that because the real benefit is from reciprocity. You want them to feel cooperatively towards you too. And so you're visible about that. And whereas competition is more hidden, we tend not to want other people to know that we're feeling competitively because then they're going to give it back to us. What we were looking at in particular was how accurate you were at detecting it. So there are some people who are very good at figuring out who their rivals are. But there are some people who actually had the opposite understanding. They, they really they thought that their rivals were actually cooperative with them. And so on average, there was just no accuracy. You want to balance the benefits, the functional benefits of cooperation and competition. You want people to cooperate because there are times that you just can't achieve something without people working together. Now this was true even with the salespeople, the car salespeople, because they often seek help from each other when they're having a hard time closing a sale. But you also want that motivational fuel that you get from competition. And so I think that the, the way to manage, to balance this is to make sure that when you have a com an environment where you need people to be competitive, that you have boundaries on it. You have rules, you have norms, you have lines you don't cross. To be effective when you're in a competitive environment, you need a strong, healthy network because people are a lot less likely to show you to your face when they feel competitively towards you. You're much more likely to get that information through back channels.